King Viserys and his court attend Lady Lena's funeral in Driftmark. Rhaenyra and Daemon reunite and are physically intimate. Meanwhile, Viserys fails to reconcile with Daemon. Prince Aemon claims Vagar as his dragon, causing an altercation with his cousins and nephews in which Lucerys slashes Aemon's eye with a knife. Seeking justice, Queen Alicent lunges at Lucerys with Viserys, Valerian steel dagger to gouge out his eye. Rhaenyra blocks Alicent but injures herself in the process. After claims that Rhaenyra's sons are bastards, Viserys decrees anyone questioning their legitimacy will have their tongues removed. Later, Hand of the King Otto Hightower assures Alicent they will prevail, while Rhaenyra and Daemon unite against Alicent and her family. To continue the true Valerian lineage, Princess Rhaenyra suggests that Lord Corlys pass his title through his granddaughter Bela by marriage to Prince Lucerys, as Leonor has not sired any children. Sir Quarrel appears to murder Leonor with an overwhelmed and inconsolable Rhaenys and Corlys believing the charred body to be their sons. Daemon and Rhaenyra privately marry in an old Valerian dragonlord tradition to perpetrate the Targaryen bloodline. After faking his death, Leonor secretly escapes Driftmark with Coral. That is the synopsis of episode 7 of season 1 of House of the Dragon entitled Driftmark. And you talk about an episode that had a lot going for it. Had a lot going on. And a lot of things that actually set in motion what happens in the future. Now I've seen clips of an older Aemon with a patch on his eye. I'm wondering, he must have lost his eye somewhere uh, along the way and there you are. I've seen the clip of the next episode and it looks really good. Seems that's the high towers and the, and the Targaryens that are at uh, war or they're, you know, they're going at it. They're going at it against each other. You know, Otto Hightower. You know his uh, his desires and what he wants, and that is uh, Aegon to be the king. And he returns because the old hand. He was burned along with uh, his son, Sir Strong, right? And. Uh, we see a wedding, a private wedding between Damon and Rhaenyra. They reconcile, they ignite, you know, passions between them are ignited. They make love, they decide that uh, they want to get married. You got to get rid of, uh, you know, Lenor. And when they had, uh, looked like at the, at, at, at that, time it did look like they were like actually fighting one another and Leonor actually died his body charred beyond recognition I don't know man because it's like why would the you know Corliss and Rainus not question like like you know you know you know it, it, it's funny because his body was charred and it was right there near his dad's um, where his dad sits you know his seat right there didn't look like there was anything else around it. Like I'm going, did they just not show that they got the body and brought it there so that he could see it? And I was thinking like, how the hell did that happen? And then all of a sudden at the end, you see, you know, Leonor uh, escaping with his uh, lover there, Quarrel. And it's just crazy. You know, you're talking about, you know, cousins burying each other. You know, Bela and uh, Prince Lerceris, right? You had, uh, you know, Aemon talking about how you know, they have their sister and then they're like going, and then Aegon's going, you know, why don't you marry her or something like that? He's all like, well, if mom had uh, betrothed me to her, then uh, I would be able to do my kingly duty, something like that, and it's like, it's just crazy. But you got to remember that this is how it was back then. To strengthify, I don't know if that's a word, to strengthen their bloodline, 
uh, marry within the family. Why not? Keep it in the family, right? All in the family, right? This is nuts, you know, <laughs> but that's how it was back then. You know, it's not like it's not like uh, it's not something that goes on nowadays. I mean, you got to remember the, you know, Queen Elizabeth and Prince uh, Philip. It was said that their first brother, their first cousins. You know? At least the one thing about them is that there's no deformities because they've shown how the kings and queens that we know from history and all that stuff, they show how they really, really looked like they're. You know, because of the inbreeding. That's what happens, uh, you know, in kings and queens and all that, I guess. But a uh, very sad note that they started off with, of course, was uh, Lena's funeral. Very beautiful, but at the same time, very sad. And there was one point where, after, as his, as the uncle of, you know, of, uh, or the brother of uh, Corliss, is you know given the eulogy i guess you can say and then while he's saying things and he's saying or that you got you got uh damon just not even showing any kind of chill he's just laughing they'll look at him but they don't say nothing there's nothing mentioned about it ever again i mean rainera does say that well you know you need to keep up appearances at least i'm trying you know i i, I you know she talks about how her and uh, leonor tried a couple times to uh have a children could see but she said that it was the worst experience of her life and i'm sure it wasn't fun for him later on you know they're talking to each other very um it was a very nice very uh you know very very heartfelt conversation between the two and he talks about how he wished he could have loved his sons more how he wished that it could have worked out i mean in the beginning you gotta remember remember a couple episodes back they decided they wanted to marry and they said that you know we're gonna do our duties we're going to try to sire kids and they were gonna have still gonna have some fun on the side meaning they can have their lovers and uh, keep up appearances you know with them being married everybody knew Allison says that you know hopefully one day your children will look like you she said that in what the last episode right and even uh, Rainus and Corliss Corliss knows that you know you know he knows right he knows that that's uh you know that he he didn't sire any kids i think they definitely know what kind of uh you know what kind of tree he swings from if you will <laughs> you know so they, they know it's not probably not a secret they know that the guy you know who's with him uh quarrel is more likely his dog his lover you know Reese Iphons who plays uh, Otto Hightower. I like his character. I think his character is the one I like the most. The way he just is able to just, you know, wriggle his way into things. And I mean, he was able to come back and be the hand again. Right? He's conspiring with his daughter, Allison. He's telling her straight up, hey, what you did? Like, she's saying that, you know, I, I disgraced myself and... Is my husband going to forgive me? And he's like, well, what do you think? He has no other choice. He's telling her to be patient because you will win. When she attacked or she was trying to attack uh, Laceris, and she was very, very just ruthless. She was, the way she acted, cutthroat, right? And her dad was smiling from ear to ear, grinning, happy. You know, his daughter finally showed that side. I've never seen the side of you. That's what she. That's what he said. That's what he told her. You know, she's already in a deep. You know what? And she's thing, especially the fact that there's people that you know have that. I think they say that there's one right there that that you know that they have an inkling that she's the one that uh, had the um, former hand. You know, the Strongs. Uh, you know, burnt to death. The one guy. Uh, what's that? Laris. He. Has that thing over her head, man. It's like going, you know, you've, you know, when it's time to collect, I'm going to collect. Even noticed at the funeral, uh, it was brought up to her that, uh, what's his name? Laris keeps looking at the, in the queen. And she kind of brushed it off. She said, ah, it's just typical of what they do to the queen. Everybody's looking at the queen, you know. But... 
yeah, I mean, like I said, I like this episode because it's pretty much set in motion, you know, what we're going to see in the future episodes. <clears throat> you know, more, most, uh, you know, the one that really comes out at me and strikes at me is the fact that how Amon got that, um, <clears throat> how he earned that eye patch. I gotta tell you, man, uh, well, that Lucerus was his brother, but the one who, yeah, Lucerus, the one who sliced his eye open and pretty much uh, his eye's done, he's gone, he's stitched up and shit, and it's like, he's pretty good with that damn uh, dagger, with that little, you know, that blade, he just went like this, boom, and it's sliced, that was it, you slice your eye, man, there's no uh, going back, you can't get that eye back, not like if you cut off a finger, and maybe you can, you know, you can, uh, Sew it back on, or you can put it in ice. And then back then, I don't know if they had, didn't have ice. I don't know if they could have reattached a finger, or even an arm, or a hand, or anything. I mean, uh, Rhaenerys, or Rhaenyra, I should say, she got sliced when she went to block uh, Allison's attempt to slice uh, Lucerys's eye, eye for an eye. Like so, she said, you know, hey, we need some payback. We need some payment. I want your son's eye, or either one of her son's eye, but then she said Luc Lucerus. She even told, uh, what do you call it? She even told who's, I'm, 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 so many names that are switching around in my, uh, in my, in my, <laughs> in my head right now. I'm going, uh, who was that again? But, uh, you know, the King's Guard, the former King's Guard of, uh, Rhaenyra now is Alicent's. So she says, go in, uh, you know, Take his eye, take uh, Lucerus's eye, and and he said he, he kind of hesitates. He goes, "You sworn, you are like you sworn to me. You are that." And he's the all. And pretty much what he said was that, "I know I'm, I'm I'm sworn to protect you." Pretty much saying that I'm not here to protect you. I'm not here to hurt someone else or you know. So if someone, let's say Lucerus, uh, went to attack uh, Allison, then then he can he, then he can you know go and get in there and uh, you know he would slice the eye out. But, man, his name escapes me at the moment. Jeez. What the hell? It's, you know, the lover of Renera. Starts with a C, right? <laughs> oh, Sir Kristen. Okay. Okay. Finally popped in my head. Yeah. You know, and he actually did the right thing. Like, you know, that's not his duty. He sworn to protect uh, Allison. Not do what she's, she, she tells him. Oh, you know, take his kid's eye out. You're not going to do that for her. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that one scene, what I like too, is, uh, Amon claims Vagar. Of course, Vagar is that legendary, uh, dragon that was talked about in Game of Thrones, and there was Lena, Lady Lena's, uh, dragon, and at first, it was kind of shaky. You know, he, uh, tried to sneak up on the dragon, and the dragon just looked like this and goes, the, you know, what the hell do you want, what? Are you kidding me? You know, looking at him, you know, like, and he, he you know, he, 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 he cocks his head back, opens his mouth, you see the tongue kind of make way, and then you see the fire about to come out. And then he just utters, Amon just utters these words, and it kind of, it kind of just stops him. And pretty much he's like, I'm going back to sleep. And then he tries to grab the stirrups, I guess that's what they are, and he turns around, you know, and, and it's just like, he starts, you know, telling him, saying these words, saying these commands. And it's almost like at first he was trying to shake him off. And then Amon had control of the dragon. Now, Bela and her sister saw this happening. They didn't, I guess they didn't know it was him. They told, you know, they told Lucerus and his brother that uh, someone stole our mother's dragon. Then when he lands, that's the whole, and when all the stuff just got all you know, messed up, and all the, the trouble just started happening, and then they get, they get into a fight, and Eamon is not punching his, his cousins, you know, Lena's, uh, Lena's dumb daughters, and his nephews too, and it's just like, this guy don't give up, you know, you know what, he's just like, you know, knocking them out, and then they're all pounding on him, they're jumping on top of him, and pounding him, you know, like this, like this, and then, uh, Lucera's takes out a blade and he tries you know pretty much tries to kill I thought he was going to 
And then quickly in my mind, I said, wait a minute, no, Aegon, wait a minute, Aegon, Aemon does, you know, live. You know, he does move on to be a little bit older, so not going to happen, but all of a sudden, one of his brother throws dirt in his eye, and then in comes Lucerus with a uppercut with a knife and takes out uh, Aemon's eye. I mean, Aemon had a good chokehold on one of the brothers, one of his nephews, and I thought he was going to snap his neck. Baelor's like, Baylor's sister was like not in her head, no, at one point, stop it, it kind of thing. Causes quite an uproar. They see, you know, Viserys and Alice and all of them, they see the, the, what transpired, the aftermath of all that. And you just wonder, I'm thinking to myself, what's, what's going to happen when these guys are older? And you saw a little clip of it in the next episode. I'm thinking there's going to be some infighting. There's going to be some major like backstabbing and deaths and all that stuff. These guys are not going to be close when they get older. Especially now that the High Towers and the Targaryens are going to be at battle at each, with each other. They're going to be at war with each other. So, you know, we'll see how this episode, uh, the next episode is. And wow, I'm telling you, we're almost in the home stretch. Ten episodes uh, of this first season and I'm... I'm hyped and pumped every time I watch an episode. This really was a good episode. I really enjoyed it. You know, I think uh, this episode to me, I think was really well written, well directed. I thought that the pacing of it was really, really just, I liked everything about it. I was invested in every focus of whatever the storyline was going on in this episode. They all connected, they all intertwined. We see the thing where Lenor pretty much was like, they probably talked to Lenor and said, hey man, do you want to go with your boy and uh, go to a place where no one's going to be with, no one's going to be able to know you're there. Just go there and live your lives together. We're going to fake your death and then we're going to be able to get married, you know, Damon and uh, Rhaenyra. It's a go. It's a plan. They executed it. Everybody thinks that Lenor died and I kind of feel sorry for, I kind of feel bad for Rhaenys and Corlys because then they think that they've lost both their children. Although they only have one child that they lost and the other child is now gone. Right? Leonor is off in the wind. Off in the drift, like drift mark, right? This is gone, you know? Just like just, just like the name of this, uh, what do you call it? Name of this uh, episode, uh, Drift Mark. And I absolutely enjoyed this episode. I thought it was very, very well done. And I like it when they have different directors for episodes of shows like that because they kind of bring their own style to it and you can kind of see that it's different from the previous episode even though it is the same show but uh, I like that I like when they did that with The Walking Dead they did that with uh, other shows and it does it does work and it's really a good uh, way of just kind of making it different and not allowing it to go stale if you have one director I mean one I mean same directors do they, they can keep a show going being the sole director Especially if you want it to be like how it was the previous episode and stuff like that. But regardless, you know, I did enjoy this episode. And, uh, well, you know, that's that. So, uh, for those of you who stopped by and uh, checked out this video, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your support. And in closing, and as always, take care.